Do you know what the best version of you looks like? Just take a look in the mirror, the person that you were born to be and say, huh, I'm taking on the best. Every day is a new day to step it up. And maybe some days I feel like giving up. I just don't get it, but I can't forget that I'm a believer in the power of yet. I may not know it now, but I will. I will. Take a deep breath and I'm chill. Mistakes are part of the game. I embrace them. I don't run from my fears. I face them. How? Pay attention, I take charge of my learning. Draw it out and work it out to show my journey. Try until it clicks, make sure that it sticks. Working at it constantly is my secret. Practice is not something I do once I'm good. It's the one thing I do that makes me good. So I take another step, I'm obsessed with progress. You know why? Why? I'm taking on the best. Hey world changers and welcome to another video lesson of taking on the best. My name is Miss McCarthy and I am on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for you. And I am so excited that I get to be your guide as we not only dive into Florida's best standards for third grade math, but I'm also here to encourage you and support you every step of the way as you take on the best version of yourself. So without further ado let's get into today's video lesson and let me teach you in this video lesson we will be representing unit fractions using an area model so grab your pencil grab your workbook page and let's get ready to take some notes All right so the directions say to represent each unit fraction by creating an area model this will be how we represent it with an area model. Let's talk about what a unit fraction is and also label the parts of this fraction and then we'll draw out the model, okay? So a unit fraction, a unit fraction is one equal piece of a whole. Okay, so today we're just going to be talking about unit fractions. If we have a whole and it's broken into pieces, a unit fraction is just referring to one equal piece of that whole. All right, now let's label the parts of this fraction here. We have the number one, the number one right here. Okay, and this one is in the top position of the fraction, right? The one is in the numerator's position. You see that number on top? That's called the numerator. It describes the amount that is being considered or shaded. Part considered. So we're going to consider one part, which is usually represented by shading, okay? And when we jump down from the fraction bar, this is the denominator. Label that as the denominator. The denominator is the total number of equal parts. Okay, and then this piece right here is called the fraction bar. Okay, so now that we have that, now we're, we're with that vocabulary, let's go ahead and put that to use, okay? So first we need to look at our denominator. The denominator is two. That means that if we have one whole shaded, and usually with an area model, I like to use rectangles because it's easier to break it apart. Um, so if we have one whole, this is one whole piece right here, one whole whole. But our denominator tells us that we need to break this whole into two equal parts. So I'm going to go right over here and make a line going down right there. And now I have one, two equal parts, right? We don't need to put that in there, okay? So we have the denominator represented here, but we don't have anything shaded in to show the amount. The numerator tells us that we need to shade in one equal part. So I'm going to take this one and usually I start from the left and we're just going to shade in one of those parts. Okay, and when we do that, we have now represented the fraction one half. You can see we've shaded in half of that rectangle, right? We've shaded in one out of the two equal parts. You might see other area models when you're referring to unit fractions. Maybe, you know, there's a, a triangle, 
right? And if we split that triangle in half and shade in one of those parts, this would also be one half of that whole triangle, right? Um, or maybe you have a circle. Here's the circle, right? Our denominator tells us to split it into two equal parts. So we could even split it going this way if we wanted to into two parts. And then if we shade in one, that would be half of the circle. Okay, so an area model is not, it does not just need to be a rectangle, but I, when I am modeling fractions, it's easier to cut it into equal parts if it is a rectangle. So moving forward, we're going to use a rectangle, but just know you might see it represented in a variety of other shapes too. Okay, so go ahead and make sure that you have all of these notes copied and then join me for number two. For number two, we have in the numerator position, we have a one that makes it a unit fraction right there. This is our numerator. And if you look up top, we know that the numerator, the numerator tells us the parts to consider. So we need to consider or shade in one part. And then we have our fraction bar. And when we jump down from the fraction bar, we have our denominator right here. And that denominator tells us the total number of equal parts. You see that number on top? That's called the numerator. It describes the amount that is being considered or shaded. And when you jump down from the fraction bar denominator, it's the total number of equal parts in each whole. So let's go ahead and draw our whole because we need to represent this fraction. And this fraction, by the way, is one fifth. Let's go back to reading that fraction. We read the top, the numerator like normal. So we just say one. And when we jump down to the denominator, we read the denominator like the grade that you're in. So not one five, but one fifth, like fifth grade. You'll notice that two is a little different. We read it with half, but if it were three, it would be one third. Four would be one fourth. Five in the denominator would be one fifth or is one fifth. Okay, so now the denominator tells us how many equal parts to break this into. So five equal parts. Now it takes a little bit of practice to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make them as equal as possible. And you can see right here at the end, I'm getting a little skinny. That last little piece, I can do better than that. So I'm going to erase this and just extend my hole just a little bit just like that to make it look a little bit better. There we go. So now we have five equal pieces because our denominator is five. And we're only going to shade in one of those pieces. It could be any one that we're shading in, but I like to get in the habit of shading in the first one. And that helps us when we end up comparing fractions. So just shade in that first one, just like that. And now we have modeled one fifth using an area model, okay? Make sure that you have that copied and then join me for number three. All right, for number three, we know we're working with a unit fraction because we have a one in the numerator. And when we jump down from the fraction bar, that is the denominator. And that's the total number of equal parts. Denominator. Let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. Okay, there we go. And we know that we have a denominator of 10. Um, what I'm going to do, because I know that 10 is actually an even number, is I'm going to go ahead and split it down the middle just like that and make five parts on one side and five parts on the other side to equal a total of 10 parts. And it might take you a couple times to get it nice and neat and that is okay. Okay, so just double checking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 equal parts, we are good to go there. And the numerator is one, so we need to shade in one part. So let's go ahead and shade in one part for the numerator. And this represents one tenth. It's one tenth of the whole thing. 
All right, go ahead and make sure that you have that copied and then let's close out this video lesson. All right, world changers. So I hope that the information provided in this episode clicked for you. And now it's time for you to make sure that it sticks. How do you do that? By taking charge of your learning. You can do that by rewatching this episode if you need to, asking plenty of questions to make sure you understand. And most importantly, getting that extra practice in because practice is not something we do once we're good. It's the one thing we do that makes us good. So keep on practicing. Before we go, let me remind you that your only competition in life is with the person staring back at you in the mirror yourself. Stop comparing yourself to other people and just focus on being the best you that you can be. And that's what we're all about here, right? Because we are taking on the best. Okay, world changers, keep working hard and I'll see you in an episode real soon, okay? Bye.